Welcome to part 9 where we will be covering performance optimization and also a whole bunch of errors and debugging problems that you might run into. So this one here is going to be more of a theory than a practical. We're mostly going to be covering um, just errors that you can come across. But at the end we will go ahead and optimize a shader just to show you a few quick little techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. Debugging and optimization. So welcome to the end of the beginner part of our shader series. Before we get into the intermediate part, I want to talk about debugging and optimization. There's a lot that can go wrong with shaders, especially when you are just getting started. So we'll start with going through some of the common errors and how to fix them. Next, we'll talk about how we can make the shaders more efficient with some small performance tips. So the first one I'm going to look at is variable is not defined. So if you see a stack of these, it means the error is elsewhere. If you see just one or two, then it does mean that a variable is not defined um, and that means you need to define it so you can do that by going float for variable or float variable depending on what it is it's as easy as that the next one is not enough temporary registers needs nine so that nine is just an arbitrary number that can be nine ten eleven depending on what you're doing and this just means that you have run out of temporary registers a temporary register stores information for your shader the more complex the shader the more it needs Fully understand this, you will need to read a lot of books on GPU programming. But in short, sometimes you just have to ditch that rim lighting or ditch compiling for Flash. Besides, if you are making a game for PC, why do you need to compile for Flash anyways? Arithmetic instructions of 64 exceeded. 64 arithmetic instructions needed to compile a program. This one really does hurt. It means you have to upgrade from a Shader Model 2 to Shader Model 3. If it's a high number, you may have to go as far as 4 or 5. But a better alternative is just to remove that extra calculation. This is just how many calculations are being used and if you exceed that, you will need to cut down. Sometimes it can be easier as just moving around a function. Implicit cast from float4 to float3. Basically somewhere in your code you are multiplying a float3 by a float4 or something and Unity does not like it. But it's not going to tell you where it is. Remember how I always put float3 mole ab.xyz or sometimes I omit the float3 often when I'm working in Unity and not in Maya and just have that dot xyz if you don't have the dot xyz's if you just have multiply a float 3 by float 4 and that's it you will likely get that error you may also have things like a float 3 1 which is still pretty bad especially for directx 11 it won't work you have to go float 3 1 comma 1 comma 1 incorrect number of arguments to numeric type instructor this is unity's way of saying implicit cast from float 4 to float 3 except only directx 11 and directx 9 couldn't handle it Implicit truncation of vector type. Yeah, this is another way of saying the exact same thing as the past two, because Unity is just that helpful. Program frag, assignment of incompatible types. Program vert, assignment of incompatible types. Same error as the past three, except this time Unity tells you which program it is in, which can also mean that it is in the structs as well though. Function return value missing semantics. I see this one a lot. Usually it is fine, but all it means is you have something like float distance in your strike when it should have something like float distance has the text board for semantic so that's nice and easy put parameter o not completely initialized now this one is exactly what it says you have some outputs that are not being assigned to anything just throw them some random variables if you need them but in most cases you can just get rid of the extra values once again this is specific to directx11 giving up parser is hopelessly lost so no one should have this error by this stage this is for your advanced shader writers. This happens when your shader is so freaking awesome that even Unity doesn't know what to do with it. In all seriousness, no. This means that you're combining modules that cannot be combined. For example, if you try a mixed tessellation, surface shader, and fragment shader, you will no doubt get this error. One thing I want to point out is you need to avoid unnecessary calculations. Does that calculation really need to be in the fragment program? Or could it be in the vertex or even outside both programs? So object level, this is anything that is not in the vertex or fragment program and is only calculated once per frame. And anything in the vertex program is calculated once per vertex per frame. Anything in the fragment program is calculated once per pixel per frame. So you can see how things start to escalate very quickly. If you're doing a arbitrary calculation, so let's say um, if you were to figure out the square root of 460, don't do that in the fragment shader. Do that in the object shader. If you want to um, do something like that's just a smooth over the su surface, so for example, calculating a normal direction, 
you can probably do that in the vertex data. So you want to avoid repeating calculations. Often we'll calculate the same things multiple times. In our last shader, the dot product of the normal against the light was done four times. If you do something like float n.l equals the normal, the n.l, you can just use that anywhere you want it. Normal map depth. For our normal map, we calculate the depth based on its degree of rot rotation. This varies only slightly from 1, so why not make it 1? Well, what we ended up doing in our shader in the end is we actually attached a slider. Only create variables if you need them. If you don't need one, then it's acceptable, but you probably want to cut down on that last register. You can do things like, you know, uh, we have float3 light direction dot I equals i light dir. Why not just use i dot light dir every time you need it? It's only when you don't need calculations as you don't want to be recreating calculations every time you need it. So as, as the last one, uh, assigning the dot product to a variable, that is good. You don't want to recalculate that every time you want it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at float, first halved, first fixed. Remember these? We talked about these a few times earlier in the series. And float is a 32-bit floating point integer. Avoid them where possible. Half is, a, is 16 bits and has a range of plus or minus 60,000 with 3.3 decimal points precision. Fixed is a, only 11 bits and it has a range of plus or minus 2 with 1 over 256 points of precision. So we can actually use fixed on anything normalized such as vectors and colors or basically anything between negative 2 and 2. And we can use a half on everything else. In the case that a half is breaking your shader or it's not looking right, you can afford a float or two. Alright, finally, common sense. Don't load in the second UV map if you aren't using it. If you are loading in um, UV1 or UV0 for your texture map and UV1 for your bump map, but you only have one UV map, just leave it at both using UV0. Always use a separate input and output struct for the vertex program. Only have one directional light, then you can actually remove point light calculation from the shader. If you only have one light, you can remove the second pass. Have a shader that is off most of the time. Just write two shaders. LOD shaders. If an, if a object is far away from you, it doesn't need room lighting and specular highlights. You can actually swap shaders in and out just like you would objects. Now I could go on, but in reality, common sense is really going to be your best friend. Practical exercise. What I'm going to do now is optimize our last shader. So let's go ahead and optimize part eight shader. I'll be re-explaining a fair bit of this um, of this lesson. So if there's something you uh, have missed or you're not too sure on I'll be able to cover that soon or you can actually ask a question and I'll do my best to answer it